Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson Navigation, serving Guam and Micronesia for 20 years. Cars Plus, Dodge Challenger, the undisputed champion. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Ahead on primetime, the woman killed in a tragic car crash early Thanksgiving Day is identified. Plus, Nestor Lacanto has the latest on a long-running legal battle between DFS and the airport that could be nearing its final stages. And shoppers take to the stores early today. Carmen Talahi joins them for this year's Black Friday Madness. Off day and good evening. We lead off with new information on that Thanksgiving tragedy that claimed the life of a 20-year-old woman. The woman killed in Thursday's early morning crash in Jigo has been identified as Winona Nerairesau. Family and friends took to social media shortly after the crash, expressing their shock and sadness at her sudden passing. Nerairesau, who was the passenger in a pickup, was ejected from a truck that lost control and ran off the road near the Jigo Church of Christ. No updates were provided on the male driver's condition, only that he was conscious and alert upon transport to the Guam Regional Medical City. Well, a man who faces federal charges for receiving child pornography will be home for the holidays on Friday morning. Joseph B. Pangolinan Jr. was released to family and placed on electronic monitoring on the condition he stay off the Internet and away from children. Federal court documents show the alleged crime occurred two years ago, the content depicting minors being bound and involved in forced sexual acts. Pangolinan, who is represented by attorney Howard Trapp, pleaded not guilty to the charge earlier this month. He was also ordered to surrender his electronic devices, including tablets, computers, and 85 CDs. Trial is set for January 17th of next year. If convicted, he faces anywhere from 5 to 20 years behind bars. Local company Wesco files a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the Ancestral Lands Commission and the administrator of Gita. The suit stems from the breach of a lease agreement for 10 acres of ALC land in Radio Barragata, where a slaughterhouse was to be built. The dispute first dates back to 2009 when Wesco alleges that the commission decided it had other plans for the property. According to court documents, the commission sued Wesco essentially seeking to end the lease agreement. But in the ensuing litigation, Wesco won a judgment in June of this year reinstating the lease agreement. In a complaint filed Wednesday, Wesco is now suing the board members and Gita administrator Jay Rojas for compensatory and punitive damages totaling $32 million. Chris, the long-running legal battle between DFS and the airport over a lucrative retail concession contract could be nearing its final stages. The court next week will hear motions by the airport to try and end the litigation. Nestor Laconta reports. DFS first sued the airport in 2013 after losing the multi-million dollar retail contract, which it had held for many years, to Loti Duty Free. Airport attorney Genevieve Ropatas. DFS was paying roughly five million dollars in minimum a annual rent. That that number jumped to approximately um, uh, 15 million with Lotte com coming in as the concessionaire. So you can see there is a significant increase in revenue. But DFS filed suit alleging a variety of improprieties against the airport, Lotte, and others. The airport has countered with allegations of misdealings by DFS as well. Rapata says next week's summary judgment motions by the airport seek an end to the protracted litigation. It's one party asking that the court dismiss of, um, of an entire case or at least portions of the case. And the airport's motion, each and every one of them, and again there are three of them, uh, three separate uh, motions are asking that the court dismiss of each and every one of DFS's protests. This case has been going on for four years and so this is... Um, the airport's uh, request that the court really end this four-year-long litigation that DFS has brought against the airport. Rapata says the airport just wants to put the retail dispute behind it and continue to move forward on some significant projects that the contract has helped fund. What they're also hoping to avoid is a lengthy, expensive trial set for early next year. We're looking at, and what we've, we've uh, represented to the court is we're looking at an eight-week trial here. And so... Um, you know, we're, we're confident that these motions for summary judgment will um, really cut that down, if not eliminate the need for a trial completely. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. 
Well, today is a time many are spending probably finishing up those Thanksgiving leftovers, others braving the crowds for those steals and deals at the stores. But it's also a day when holiday traveling at the airport picks up. The holiday travel season is taking off. A busy time for airports across the globe. <laughs> Excited. Excited. And at the AB Wanpan International Airport. We are going to Taiwan. Instead of taking advantage of the store sales today, the Tang family has other things in mind. We are going to eat some Taiwanese sweet food and uh, enjoy the shopping. But when traveling this time of year, a reminder for passengers to show up to the airport at least two hours before their flight. Though the beginning of the busy traveling day wasn't too bad for passengers like Rebecca. They seem to be moving people along pretty well this time, so hopefully it all goes well. Also, take note of the do's and don'ts, what you can and cannot bring before going through TSA. Airport officials say TSA has rolled out the new procedures for those taking electronic devices and food items through the screening area. Find out more at tsa.gov. Well, the holiday season is officially in full swing, proof on a day like today where we saw sales in stores and online targeting those wanting to get their Christmas lists checked off early. As Carmen Terlahi reports, thousands passed on Thanksgiving dinner to load up on the stocking stuffers instead. She has your Black Friday report. On your mark, get set, shop! Thousands literally busted through the gate for doorbuster savings. This video was submitted from a Macy staffer working Thursday night when the department store kicked off its Black Friday sales. Over at Home Depot, doors opened as daylight broke. Black Friday shoppers have been lining up since 1 in the morning to get their hands on some awesome deals. The early shopper catches the deals. Luke Fernandez, one Home Depot customer, woke up at 4.45 a.m. to join the line that circled the parking lot. You should come earlier. People have been here since 1 a.m. waiting in line and the store didn't open till 6. I bought this toy and a couple lights and then I'm going to buy a Christmas tree. So why are you buying all these things? Because they're on sale! Luke was not the only shopper up early. Nestor Gagarin says he comes every year to buy his work supplies. Uh, just to get the items that I need for my work. I got a, a vacuum and tools and that's pretty much it. For Carmen, the 63rd customer to enter here this morning, it's her first Black Friday experience. Though the early morning and long lines were worth the gifts, she agrees shoppers should always be courteous and aware of others around them. It's not just for us, it's also for gifts. Great. There's some people out there that can be brutal. It's, it's everything. It's the whole entire process. All of it. Yeah. So just be safe. I think Black Friday gets crazier every year. With markdowns continuing tomorrow and into the weekend, a Merry Christmas starts with sales and safe shopping. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM news app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming, KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. value relationships because when we commit I love you God until you're 80 until you're 90 until you're 100 forever we are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter because when we commit to relationships we never stop caring Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you federal employees and annuitants enroll today And to celebrate with a brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 8 at ITE. Hey, honey. Have you seen the fence? Because it's missing again. Really? That is so weird. Yeah, where do you think it could be? Uh, I don't know. Do you think you can keep an eye out? Yeah, I could probably find it. 
But how long will it take? It usually takes three or four hours to find a, a fence. Let's go. Okay, go Cardinals. We're good. Can't believe she bought it. Let's go. Hyundai, official sponsor of the NFL. When you know what you want and you want it great, look no further than Ruby Tuesday's new Steakhouse Sensations menu. Choose from a 20-ounce dry aged prime bone-in ribeye or an 8-ounce filet mignon tenderloin. Either steak seared to your preference and served with two specialty sides, like the Nancy mashed potatoes, grilled asparagus, or roasted Brussels sprouts. Enjoy surf and turf and add a succulent lobster tail or tender grilled salmon filet to complete your meal. This plus a whole lot more, it's Steakhouse Sensations for a limited time and only at Ruby Tuesday Guam. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Welcome back. Lawmakers will go into session first thing Monday. Several measures are up for discussion, including Bill 45, which would do away with the primary election. Also, Bill 164 relative to protection against gender discrimination and Bill 209, which deals with fiscal year 2018 solid waste operation funds for the Guam Solid Waste Authority, a resolution that seeks to have Guam's delegate and members of Congress seek alternate funding to pay for war operations is also on the agenda. Session begins at 9 a.m. on Monday. A pair of bills not on the agenda, 141 and 142. The administration making yet another attempt to get lawmakers to have those measures go up for a public hearing. Governor Calvo submitted both five months ago, one to authorize a $125 million bond for GMH improvements. The other would raise the business privilege tax from 4% to 4.75 to service the bond debt and fund GMH's chronic budget shortfall. GMH Administrator Peter John Camacho states in part, quote, GMH is our island's only public hospital and it needs, to su needs the support of the legislature so it can continue its mandate, end quote. Adding, quote, it's insanity what we've been forcing ourselves to do again and again and again. Let's discuss the solution and implement it, end quote. Speaker Cruz, meantime, says he won't schedule hearings until Calvo agrees to hold a voter referendum on the tax hike as required by law. It happened more than 70 years ago, but it provides some sobering insight into the bitter race relations that would weigh on a generation of Americans that followed. Nestor Laconso now with part two on the Agena race riots. Of all places, Guam, and of all times, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But that's where and when the tragic riots unfolded. Writer Carla Smith was researching her thesis on the contributions of African Americans in Guam when she learned of the incidents from University of Guam President Robert Underwood. Intrigued, Carla is working on a documentary for local PBS. And it's about... Um an incident that happened near the end of World War II here on Guam between black and white service members, between Navy sailors and um, white Marines. Carla says her research shows tensions were already running very high. She writes that one historian called it one of the most serious incidents between African American and white military personnel during the Second World War. Blacks felt slighted by what they considered discriminatory practices within the armed forces. The confrontation was fueled by that and competition for the attention of local women. The actual riot itself was about, lasted for two days from the 24th of December through the 26th of December, but there are a lot of things that actually led up to it. You know, for example, there were, um, there were skirmishes between black and white service members, there was rock throwing, there was um, some shooting, racially motivated shootings, um, grenade throwing, all these different things that happened and, and it kind of escalated up until the, on the 24th when it erupted basically into this conflict here on Guam. The rioters were charged in military court and for her documentary, Carla is trying to reach out to witnesses or even their descendants who might know more about what happened. Yes, there were actually some Chamorros who testified during the court proceedings. Um, off the top of my head, I can think of Antonio Manglona, um, let's see, Vincente Rosario testified, a David T. Cruz. They both would have been about 16 or 17 years old at that time. Um, Anto Antonia Tenorio Rivera, Loris Tenorio Rivera, Candelaria Tenorio Rivera, Jose Leon Guerrero, who served as an interpreter during the proceedings, Anna Flores testified, and Rose Bloss gave information to, to help the proceedings, to help the investigation. So if anybody knows about, you know, their relatives, you know, testifying, I'd be more than happy to talk to them because we want to make it, you know, interesting and we want to get perspectives from everybody. 
There were many disturbing events that led to the fateful riots. What was the final catalyst and how did it end? There were two deaths and there, um, there was some prosecution, yes. But I can't give the whole thing. You have to, you have to watch it. <laughs> Her documentary is scheduled to air on local PBS in spring 2018. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Laconto. Now important news for our island veterans. The Guam VA will be holding several flu vaccination outreaches at various areas of the island in the coming weeks. To be eligible, veterans must be registered with the Guam Community-Based Outreach Clinic and possess a valid ID card or other form of ID. The first outreach will be held on Tuesday, November 28th from noon to 3 p.m. at the Manila Mayor's Office and then on Thursday, November 30th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Tamuning Gym. For more information, you can call the Guam VA at 475-5760. Well, it's a popular piece of jewelry for locals and those abroad missing home, but were the clan pendants really worn by ancient Chamorros? One local researcher shares her findings on the Mariana Sanahi as part of an ongoing lecture series at the Micronesian Area Research Center. Carmen Terlahi has more. In the shape of a half moon carved from fossilized giant clams, the Sanahi is a symbol of Chamorro culture, suggesting greatness and power. Dr. Judy Flores shared her findings about the beloved Chamorro pendant. This is the only reference I have that said it was actually found on a burial. And I'm sure Noel is aware and we are all aware that this is really third-hand knowledge. Flores searched to find the history of the Sanahi, but was unable to verify if they were really worn by ancient Chamorros, though she had no doubt its role in modern Chamorro society. So again, we, we just come up with no verification that Sanahi were in burials, or if they were, they were very, very, very rare. And uh, were they a necklace? Were they worn? We still don't know. Well, while the use of the, the Sanahi in ancient times is inconclusive, the object has become a significant marker of uh, Chamorro identity today. Flores cited Angel Santos, the founder of Nacion Chamorro, who wore the Sanahi. According to Flores, by 1996, activists and artists used the Sanahi as a tangible object that linked them to ancient times before colonial occupation. Activists today, like carver Roman Duenas, have kept the tradition alive. As a carver, it's a testament to the ingenuity and skill of our ancestors. People are becoming more increasingly, increasingly culturally aware. So now, like, this is, I think this is turning into less... Um, less of a fashion statement and more of like a symbol of cultural identity. Duenya says it's a skill to cut, shape, and carve the Sanahi, a tradition he hopes will continue. Anybody can, can wear Sanahi provided they, they know the cultural significance of it, even if they're not, even if they're not Chamorro. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi. And Mark will continue to have lectures at UOG free and open to the public about Chamorro culture and history. Kiko's Adventure on the Magic Flying Proa. Laura Torres Souter, also known as Auntie Lo, wrote this book with Kiko, her seven-year-old grandnephew. It's a story about Chamorro's history that will make its debut at the Guam Museum tomorrow. One day we went and visited Gognia, the, the memorial at Gognia. And he was very curious about why so many children died. Out of that, it dawned on me that this is the kind of thing that we need to share with Chamorro children everywhere. And children of whether they're Chamorros or not, if they have any interest in Guam and Guam history, but particularly for Chamorro children. The book will be launched at a special price tomorrow with a free reading at 10 and 11 a.m. The book will be sold at the Guam Museum's gift shop. Well, your Dial Rental and Athlete of the Week is coming up next in sports, but first, your island weather. Managing our wireless data used to drive my family crazy. But now that we've switched to GTA and get all that bonus data, we're spreading the love. You sure you don't mind the wait, honey? Take your time. I'm good. But we're missing the game. Nope. 
I've got bonus data from GTA. Come watch. Love it. Get 10 extra gigs of wireless data on every line every month when you bundle. Visit GTA.net for more details. Guam is truly a majestic place with its sheer natural beauty, wealth of beaches, and culturally rich landscape. Unfortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant, the African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I have some programming news to pass along to you in just a bit. But first off, your diorant to own Athlete of the Week. Check it out. We're here at Dye Rentone, East Aganya, for our Dye Rentone Athletes of the Week. Today we have local fitness and bodybuilders, Nikki and Kevin. Jack? Congratulations on both of you for uh, Dye Rentone Athletes of the Week. Who would you like to donate your check to? Uh, St. Dominic's uh, Senior Home up in Barragata Heights. You guys both competed in the Sean Ray Classic held in Hawaii. Being a mother of two, how is it prepping for a show of that caliber? It's a little difficult, but at the same time, you have to prioritize and make sure that you get your workouts done as far as still being able to maintain a household and your particular priorities is meal prep, working, getting that workout in, and doing your daily jobs. Kev, big show, a lot of competitors. Tell us about the prestigious event. This is uh, the first annual um, Sean Ray Classic, Hawaiian Classic, and Sean Ray didn't expect uh, as much uh, competitors and spectators uh, at this event so the modern hotel was just full house standing room uh, 300 plus competitors so eventually next year would be at the um, convention center in Hawaii taking first place in both the band weight division for bodybuilding and classic physique opening doors for yourself as far as sponsorships um, currently I'm sponsored by 808 hardcore nutrition in IAEA um, I have a one-year contract with them, so they definitely uh, support me 100% as far as supplements and, and anything that I need um, to just uh, get my workout on and uh, also contest prep. Um, it's definitely opened doors um, as far as national qualifications. Um, I can do um, any uh, national qualifier or pro qualifier shows next year, so it, actually, it, it definitely opened doors for me. Nikki taking third place in your division with close to 30 other women competitors. Uh, what's next for you? Well, um, I'm still grateful that I placed. I, I think our biggest enemy usually is ourselves. And I m multiple times wanted to give up. And I'm really glad I didn't. I beat my worst enemy, which I guess is me. And being able to show what I can do at a bigger show considering Guam is our home, I was able to feel like I have more to bring in the next package that I have. Um, I'm looking towards March or April for the next show for me to come up. And a uh, pro card hopefully in the near future for you. Definitely, yeah, uh, that's that's the uh, actually the big picture there and um, also, you know, potential. So I'm definitely going to train hard. Um, training with uh, a new coach, uh, which is IBB Pro, Stan McQuay in California. So Definitely, he's going to dial me in uh, until the next show. All right, congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Darren's Own Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by... Kevin wanted to shout out Fit For You Guam, Fuck Guy, Brennis, and Half a Day for sponsoring him locally. 
West Care Pacific Island's second annual 5K Veterans Home Run takes place tomorrow morning at Chamorro Village in the Ganya. Showtime is at 5 in the morning with Go Time is scheduled for 6. Bring the family and support our veterans as they raise funds for the different programs that help our soldiers in need. It's not too late to register the day of the event, but it will cost them $15 each. Okay, so the proceeds are basically going to go to those veterans at risk or homeless, along with their families. The money's going to be going to is there other programs such as GREP, uh, the, the Guam Healthy Relationship Education Program. We have the Project Isata. So, you know, they, they pretty much help those at-risk youths like that. And also for or summer camps. And then we also have the Guam Project and then, uh, of course, Pazuta. Steve Claros. And the Chargers, led by Phillip Rivers, pick up another win on the road over the Cowboys, 28-6. Rivers, with 434 yards passing, through three touchdowns. Keenan Allen, unguardable today, 11 receptions for 172 yards. With this touchdown, Dak no good, two interceptions. Pick six from Desmond King, 90 yards to the house. Just as Dallas was knocking on the door, Cowboys drop to 5-6. and six and are definitely missing Zeke in the backfield. All right, now for your programming news. Monday, November 27th, 4 in the morning, NFL on CBS. It's the Dolphins taking on the Patriots. Keep it locked to KUAM TV, 11, 7, 25 a.m. The Saints in L.A. taking on the Rams. Last game for you, 11, 20 a.m. NBC Sunday Night Football, KUAM TV 8. It's the Packers taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. Nissan's fall clearance event is on with the best prices of the year. Save as much as $8,000 on the all-new A-Passenger Armada. Get the cargo van selected best in class with 25 miles per gallon combined. The fuel-efficient NV200 compact cargo van with 5-year, 100,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. Starting at just $127 per pay period. Great deals on Versa Sedan, Frontier King Cab, or the 7-passenger Pathfinder. Starting at just $87 per pay period during the fall clearance event at Nissan Upper Tumon. Find out more at NissanGuam.com. Everyone wants to know when Nick Rib will be back, including Jamie, who tweeted that you must answer its call. This is that call. Hello? Jamie, Nick Rib is back. Uh, uh, what is this? You posted, and we answered. Nick Rib is back. Savory pork, tangy pickles, spicy barbecue. Answer its call for a limited time, only at McDonald's. All 2017 models must go during Triple J Auto Group's Big Deal 2017 Inventory Blowout. We're making room for our 2018 models. That's right, all-out blowout sale. Thousands off on all 2017 Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazdas, Lincolns, Volvos, and Kias. Now is the time to check out the largest selection of brands on Guam. See PD and Post ads for details. Every customer receives a free gift. Stop by today or visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Triple J, 33 years of putting customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday to you, James Tarusin Cruz, turning 12. Love the family. Remember, you can be a part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. And now, time to announce the winner of the Yummy Coldstone Creamery Birthday Cake. This week's winner is... Aiden and Aiden Hunt. They're twins. Yeah. That's right. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to Rep. We'll be contacting you on how you can redeem your yummy Cold Stone Creamery birthday cake. Yeah, that's going to do it for us here in the news desk. Jason's next with Extra. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. Welcome, everybody, to our post-Thanksgiving show of KRM News Extra. I'm Jason Salas, still working off the effect.